How's everybody doing? Welcome to the channel. This is John chapter 17, verse 14. Jesus says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. Jesus is talking about his disciples and believers here. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. For they, have not, they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. When we come to the Lord, we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We begin to read his word. We begin to pray. We begin to fight for our salvation. Obey the Lord. Walk with the Lord. Share his word. And Jesus leads us. He's the great counselor. He's our king. He's our shepherd. And we live in a world full of darkness. And the world hated Jesus. And the world will hate you too. The world is dark and evil. And when you walk around with the light of Jesus shining through you, you're not going to be liked by many people. It's hard to share the word. We live in a world full of evil. The prince of the air, Satan and his demons. And sharing the word of the Lord is not easy in a world that hates you. Some people are a little more accepting than others. Some people are accepting and some are not. And so for those of you out there who have a checkered past, it's really hard for you. I've kind of learned or felt like, okay, it's maybe not fully true, it's how I feel. A lot of people who have had a life that is, I don't want to say easy, because no one's life is easy. And um, that's the truth. But have had things come together more so than others. It looks like they've made the right choices. And they've got it all together. Um, it seems as though it may be a little easier for them to spread the word, possibly. Versus someone who is a whiskey drinking, bar fighting, um, wild man. And I say that because... When you have a checkered past that is really colorful, once you come to the Lord and the Lord's light starts to shine through you and you start sharing the, the word, especially with those that you used to run with, it makes it tough because they want to call you fake. They want to you know tell you like, oh, I know you, whatever, this is a front. They don't understand that it's a transformation, that the Lord transforms us, and then we fight for our salvation and our walk with the Lord. The Holy Spirit convicts us in our sin once we begin to come to Him and walk with Him and seek Him. He helps us in our walk as we stumble through this life. And so... What I like to do is just share my testimonies. I just share the spiritual things that I have witnessed. I've witnessed demonic spirits, things thrown across the room. I've witnessed um, some serious affliction on people, um, lots of spiritual warfare. I've also witnessed, a, you know, the Holy Spirit. Um, so I've always known that the enemy was real. And the Lord was real. But for a long time, I did not walk with the Lord. And I knew. But I just kind of buried it. And some of us have to learn through a lot of pain. For all you people out there who are going through pain and struggle and think that the Lord is not real. It is a molding. It, it's a learning lesson. You're in school. This life is like school. To be transformed throughout your life in the end game before you leave this earth is to become more like Christ you know so 
if you're in a lot of pain and you're going through struggles, look at it as ask the Lord why. What's he trying to tell you? Because believe me, I have been through it and I'm still going through it. But when he brought me to him, who, let me tell you, it was rough, rough, rough. I'm talking knots on my head because I was not surrendering. I was not listening. I was seeing these things and I spiritually kind of knew but I was still dancing the way I wanted to dance, walking the way that I wanted to walk. And then things just got so heavy that like, I just had like, okay, I surrender, you know? So, but it's hard to share, share the word with <laughs> old people that you ran with and stuff like that. Um, and people feel convicted whenever you tell them of the Lord, you're speaking light to people that are living in darkness and it makes them uncomfortable the relationship changes um they often think you're judging them that's why i like to just share my testimonies and what the lord's done for me and not try to convince them just let the lord take them share your word they accept it or they don't and move on let's see that was 14 the lord says in 15 my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one you're here on mission you are here to serve the lord the lord has given you gifts the lord has given you gifts and he will provide all that you need for his name and his kingdom the Lord says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all other things shall come. Now listen, I don't have everything that I need all the time. I feel like, I'm like, man, I need this. I'm out of that. I'm running out of money. What am I going to do? What am I, you know, seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all other things will be added. Faith. Call upon the Lord and rest in him and ask him what he's trying to show you through those times of, of struggle. But we are here for a mission to serve the Lord. The Lord says, protect them from the evil one. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. Know that you have an enemy. And your only protection against the enemy is the Lord. In verse 16, the Lord says, They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. As you give your life to Christ and start to walk with him, you become less like the world. You are separated from the world more and more. The Lord says in 17, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. The Lord is truth. There is no what people talk about religion. I'm not into religion and all that. Well, the Lord is truth. Jesus Christ is truth. The only true religion. The Lord says, sanctify them by truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. So in 17, a follower of Christ becomes sanctified or set apart for sacred use, cleansed and made holy through believing and obeying the word of God. So that's where you're separated when you come to the Lord. A follower of Christ becomes sanctified, set apart for sacred use, cleansed. We are cleansed and made holy through believing and obeying the word of God. Believing and obeying. He or she has already accepted forgiveness through Christ's sacrificial death. Here's a key part. But daily application of God's word 
has a purifying effect on our minds and our hearts. I'll say that again. But daily application of God's word has a purifying effect on our minds and hearts. Daily. If you go to work, or I'm sorry, if you go to church on Sunday, that's not daily. You cannot be walking with the Lord just going to church on Sunday. I know that if I only go to church on Sunday, and that's the only time I have with the Lord, it's not even close to enough. Nothing can control an evil mind. Everybody has the most defiling, wicked, evil thoughts that come out of left field. And the farther you are from the Lord, the closer you are to the enemy. And the first thing that the enemy wants is your mind. So daily, we have to do it daily. Daily, pouring the light in daily, calling on the Lord daily. God's word has a purifying effect on our minds and hearts. Scripture points out sin. And it motivates us to confess. So as we read scripture, it points. It's a self-evaluation. You look at yourself and go, wow, the Lord will speak to you as you read his word. And as we self-evaluate our behavior and how we live, it will all be right in front of us. And then we can confess, oh Lord, I am messed up right here. Holy cow, help me. And it renews our relationship with Christ. Scripture points out sin, motivates us to confess. And it renews our relationship with Christ. It renews it. As we fall away, you get back in the word. Your eyes are opened wide again. You confess your sin. You are cleansed. And it renews our relationship with the Lord. He picks us back up and he goes, okay, Mike, here we go. Back on your feet. He picks us up constantly. He is our father, our eternal father. He knows our struggles here. We live in a world that is nothing but death and evil all around us. We have an adversary that we can't see with minions that work against us. Constantly, that study us. The Lord knows our struggles. And the Lord guides us back to the right path. So Sunday is not going to do it. Daily. It's daily. Jesus prayed for all who would follow him. Jesus and the Father. Jesus prays to the Father. They are always pointing at each other. Jesus prayed for all who would follow him, including you and others that you know. He prayed for unity. He prayed for protection from the evil one. Your only protection is the Lord from the evil one. He prayed for holiness. Now this is important. This should help you. Knowing that Jesus prayed for us should give us confidence as we work for his kingdom. Jesus is praying on our behalf. That is powerful. We need to know that. Jesus' great desire for his disciples was that they would become one. Jesus' great desire for his disciples was that they would become one he wanted them unified as a powerful witness to the reality of god's love there's where community comes in for all of us who separate ourselves that was me i'm a loner don't like crowds don't like groups i'm good but when it comes to the body of Christ, we are called to be involved, to be in the body of Christ. And um, look at your story. Look what you've been through. You have something to bring to the table. 
in the body of Christ that can help other believers. And so, yeah, going to small group, I don't want to do it. But once I get there and the conversations opened up and I get over myself and I open my mind and I keep my eyes on the Lord, it's about the Lord. When we take our eyes off of ourselves and we look at Jesus and what he would have us do and how we can honor and glorify him and his kingdom and what he did for us and his grace upon us and his love for us, it's a lot easier to show up and get into the community groups. There's so much right here, just from verse 14 to 20. I mean, it's huge. Are you helping to unify the body of Christ? Are you helping to unify the body of Christ? You can pray for other Christians. Avoid gossip. That's a big one. Well, it sure is easy to talk about other people. Oh, yeah. I can do that. It's easy to deflect from ourselves and look at everybody else. Another thing is it's easy to see all of our problems and not look at all the blessings that we have. I'm good at that. We should build others up. Work together in humility. Give your time and money. Exalt Christ and refuse to get sidetracked arguing over decisive matters. That's a good one. Refuse to get sidetracked in this world that is so busy. Man, I get sidetracked. And here's a big one. Let's not get sidetracked arguing over decisive matters. Like, should you wear a hat in church or not? I heard a preacher <laughs> talk about that. Like, if you're in church and someone's wearing a hat, sometimes I wear a hat, sometimes I don't. But if your main concern is that that guy's wearing a hat and disrespecting the Lord. Like, man, we got problems. Um, we're to be as one in the body of Christ. That dude's hat, whatever. We got real deep issues, soul issues, spiritual wars going on. And you know, we're worried about somebody wearing a hat. Like, talk about distraction leading us into whatever hat. Little things like that the enemy can use to swallow us up and um, cause division. We're talking about two spiritual kingdoms who are at a war. And we have a choice to pick which side. And there's so much more, obviously, a whole giant book about all of it. And we're worried about clothes and all that jazz. Like, if Jesus really did die on the cross, nothing else really matters other than to walk with him to serve him, to read his word, to pray and obey. And believe me, I'm not perfect. I fall, I fail. I try hard though. I do try hard. And I confess my sin when I mess up. If Jesus really died on the cross. What is truly important? What is truly important? 
Seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all other things shall come. That's it for this message. Please like, subscribe, share, and be blessed.